Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. In today's video, Melissa and I are going to be putting together some canned salsa. So first I'm going to show you the tools that we're going to need and then we'll head out to the backyard and I'll get going with the video. So in front of you are the tools that you're going to be needing for today's video. We got the water bath pot up top and then in front of you here are the canning tools. We got the lid gripper, the bubbler slash headspace gauge. We got the lid tool. We got the can picker upper. We got the tongs and we have the funnel. Make sure you have all these tools. They're sold just in about every big box store as well as online. You can pick them up real cheap on Amazon. So make sure you grab those tools and we'll get going with the video. All right guys, so we're out in the garden and Melissa spent yesterday cleaning out the garden as you can see. And uh, what we have left here is our trusty old pepper plants. And we're just clipping off the last few peppers we got. I got Hungarian hots and I also have some jalapenos here. And they did incredibly well this year. Our squash didn't do too hot. Our eggplant just decided, hold on, our eggplants, there's Blackie. Our eggplants just decided to all of a sudden start growing and flowering. We haven't seen any all year and they finally decided to start sprouting as we are coming to tear the garden up for the winter. So we're going to be using some uh, garden jalapenos. Look at this little surprise we found. Got a set of twins. It's a little lopsided though. All right, guys, we're going to just finish picking our peppers out here and then we'll uh, head back up to the kitchen and I'll show you how I get things laid out on the counter. All right, guys, so what I'm going to be putting in my salsa is we got uh, nine tomatoes. I'm using four uh, white onions just because they're on the smaller side. And I'm going to use a handful of peppers. These ones aren't particularly hot. However, the jalapenos, that's really where you're going to get your heat. So I'm only putting three of them in. The last couple batches I did were a little on the hot side. I like a little hot, but not too much. Um, one clove of garlic, and you'll need some cilantro. And then as far as seasoning, all I do is a teaspoon of, of ground cumin, uh, two tablespoons of salt, a um, couple squirts of lime juice, usually like, you know, maybe a tablespoon at most. And then I use one cup of apple cider vinegar. So we'll get these washed and uh, cut up and we'll start combining them into our, our cooking pot. All right, the first step is coring the tomatoes. Just pull the core out. If you see any um, small bad spots, stuff like that, you can cut that out. And then uh, we'll set them up to start the blanching process. So what we do with our cilantro is we just kind of take the tops off um, and we don't, we leave the stalks because the stalks end up giving it, I don't know, just the wrong consistency, I guess you could say. Um, then uh, get your garlic cloves prepared, peel them, and then for the most part, the stuff is going to be thrown in the food processor and uh, that generally cuts out on a lot of time at the cutting board. Okay guys, for the first setup, what I generally do is for blanching, I try and get a system down because one of the hardest things in the blanching process, if you don't have organization, is you're just going to have a mess everywhere. So the first step in blanching is you got to put the tomatoes in boiling water for about 30 seconds or so, just so that the, the skin can start uh, peeling off the tomato. From there, they get dropped into the ice water bath, just cools them off, and then you can peel them. And then right from there, I throw them in the food processor, and then after the food processor, they get put in, combined into the cooking pot. So let me get the camera set up, and we'll start doing the blanching. All right, guys, so I'm going to just start dropping the tomatoes in the boiling water. We're going to let them sit in there and you'll start seeing the, the skin of the tomato start 
uh, breaking off the tomato. Generally about 30 seconds will do the trick. Sometimes it takes up to a minute. But you'll start to see that the skin will start delaminating from the rest of the tomato. So if I can show you here just for instance, you see the size of the side of that tomato right there starting to break apart. See that? And just start delaminating and what we do is we'll start peeling that skin off the tomato after we put it in the cold water. Okay, so now we're going to put them in the cold water. Now that while those tomatoes are cooling off in the cool water, we can start putting the next batch in and we basically just keep working it down the line. So after you put it in there for about 30 seconds, the skin just comes right off. If you have some that give you a hard time, it doesn't hurt to throw them back in. We'll just make a mental note to bring that 30 seconds up to a minute or whatever it takes to get the skin to come off. That's pretty much it. Blanching makes it a lot easier. Get these skins off. And then what you're left with is just the, the tomato like this. So now we're just going to throw it in the food processor. And the trick in the food processor, I'll tell you now while you can hear me, uh, you don't want to get it chopped up too fine because as it sits in the cooking pot, after I combine the tomatoes, I'm going to put it on the stove and put it on a very light flame just so it can start heating up and it'll save us time in the long run for cooking. So uh, you don't want it to get uh, cut up too fine, basically because as it heats up on the stove, it'll become more tender and it'll continue to break up a bit. So you don't want to have just tomato juice. You want to have a little bit of tomato consistency in your salsa. So what I generally do is I get it, I'll, I'll get the camera over the food processor so you can see what I'm talking about. And I try and put it in the food processor long enough just to bring it up to maybe a little bit smaller than a diced consistency. Now I do, I have seen videos people make, they take their tomato skins, dehydrate them and combine them to make a uh, tomato powder. I haven't gotten that far yet. I mean, I'm fairly new to canning as it is so just one step at a time for me I'm just doing what I can so we're going to put it in the food processor all right so when I have my tomatoes done that's about the consistency that we're at right now and that's generally a good place to start the beauty of salsa is you can kind of do it to your liking. Combine ingredients to your liking. And that's basically how I do it. I, it comes out a little different. It comes out a little different every time I do it. And um, that's quite all right. It turns out with mine, this last batch was in that pot for about a minute or so and that seemed to be about perfect. The first round was a little harder to peel. This is practically falling right off the tomato. That's, that's what you're looking for.
right guys, that's it for the tomatoes. So now what I'm going to do is kind of rearrange my setup right here. And we will continue to combine ingredients on the stovetop as the salsa batch starts heating up. Alright, so now that we've got the tomatoes blanched, this is my setup now for canning. So what I've done is I've taken our water bath, we do water bath canning. I've taken my jars which are washed and sanitized and I've put them in the water that's now heating up to boil in the uh, water bath. So what that does is that heats the jars up as well as the water so that by the time I'm ready to combine the salsa batch here, that while I'm working on combining the rest of the ingredients over here, that can start heating up to somewhere around a boil. So that when it comes time to actually prepare the jars, the jars are heated and the water is heated and it's ready to go. I also have a small pan over here which I put my lids in and shortly before the time that I will be loading up the jars and preparing them to can, I can uh, have that at a simmer and I can pull the lids out nice and warm too so that I can assure that they get a nice seal on top of the jar. I moved the food processor a little closer because I'm going to basically be chopping up the ingredients and then combining them directly into the cooking pot. And I'm going to start uh, combining the rest of those ingredients now so that we can get this batch cooking. Alright, so this is the consistency of the peppers that I generally like. They can be put up pretty fine. So I'll just combine them. And if you generally have a low tolerance for a lot of heat in your salsa, you can de-seed your peppers prior to adding them to the batch and that generally will keep a lot of the heat out of the seeds. Alright, so now that I've started adding my ingredients, I'm going to I just turn the heat on and I have it set to uh, medium sized flame. Just to get her up to what we're looking for is just a very slight simmer where you can see the heat transfer coming up. Alright, so that pretty much sums up everything that I'm going to need with the food processor. So I'm going to start cleaning up and while the uh, batch is continuing to heat, I'm going to add the final ingredients and start prepping the area for the mason jars. So we're going to get going with that and I will be back with you shortly. Alright, so now I'm going to add the final ingredients. I got one cup of apple cider vinegar. some lime juice and that's to taste and I'm going to do some cumin Last but not least, two tablespoons of salt. All 
All right, here's all the combined ingredients, and this is generally the consistency that we're going to have for the salsa. And now I'm going to, while that is heating up, I'm going to start laying out my jars. Okay, it looks like our salsa is now up to temperature and we can start a timed cook and I'm going to cook it for 30 minutes. So we have it on a light simmer and basically you see that small area where the, the uh, hot sauce is coming up from the bottom, that's basically what you're looking for. So once you get it up to temperature like this, start the timer for 30 minutes and stir occasionally so that you get a thorough cook. Alright, so you're going to need the jars and you're also going to need a canning set. These are pretty generic. You want to get yourself one. Some of the kits are now selling them without this. It's a lid lifter tool. It's got a small magnet on the end so that you can go right into the hot water where the lids are and pull them up with ease, not burning yourself. But generally, they come with funnels. Okay, the funnel goes over the top of the jar. It makes it a lot easier to ladle in the material to the jar. You got yourself a can, or can picker upper. And you basically just go in like that and pull it out of the hot bath. Uh, you got these tongs just in case. I generally don't need them because I have, you know, I use regular cooking tongs. This is your lid spacing tool and also debubbler, they call it, so that you can stick it in the jar and relieve any air pockets that may be trapped inside the jar prior to water bath. And of course your lid lifter, which I already went into. So that's pretty much all you're going to need other than your cans. So I generally get this stuff out and I lay a towel down. It's always good to have your hot hot uh, jars as they come out of the hot water. Just it's it's safer for the jars, uh, reduces chances of breaking, and it and it allows you know in case you ladle stuff over your counter, it'll collect any spills. I generally use an older towel, just so that you know I'm not staining any good towel. Put an old towel down, line up your jars, have your funnel ready, start combining them. Okay. All right, so we got five minutes to go, and since get close here I'm going to start prepping the jars so that they can be all set to go by the time this is all done cooking. All my jars are out. I've just started the water for my lids. I started heating them up and generally now it's just a matter of time. I got roughly two minutes left on the salsa mix. So we got the lids all ready to go. I just got to get them up to a simmer. And I'm ready to start loading the jars. All right, so the salsa is done cooking. What I got here is my headspace tool. And if you look here, it might be hard to see. You got little measurements here. That first notch is one quarter. The second notch is half inch. So basically what I want is to load these jars so that the top of it falls right into the half inch of headspace. So we'll take our funnel, and we'll put it in the first jar, and we can start label ladling our salsa into the jars. Now we're going to go and debubble. All 
right, now that I've gotten all my jars loaded, I'm going to clean off the rim. I just use a paper towel. And you want to clean the tops of the jars off to assure that you get a nice seal with the lid. You're going to go around every jar. You're going to check to make sure there's no cracks in the top of the jar, cracks or nicks, because that will affect the seal. Take our lid tool and start grabbing our lids. Okay, now we got our lids on. We're going to put the collars on the lids, and these are just going finger tight. Now that we got all of our cans sealed up, I'm going to start placing them in the tray of the boiling bath. Generally what I do is try and load on opposite sides so that the basket doesn't flip into the pot. And you want to keep them spaced out if possible enough so that they're not clinking together while the water is boiling around the jars. All right, so now we got those jars in the water, and we're going to start our timer for 20 minutes. All right, so we're going to let them sit in the pot, and in about 20 minutes' time, we'll be pulling them out, and I'll show you how we do that. As you can see, there's a little bit of salsa left over in the pot. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to combine that into a jar and put it in the fridge and we'll be able to taste the batch tonight, give it a test run and, and see how we did and that way it won't go to waste. All right, so we just reached 20 minutes. Now I'm going to carefully remove the jars from the basket. I don't know if you could hear that sound, but that was the lids sealing up. Now what we're going to do is basically a reverse of what we did before. I got my towel laid out. It's very important to be laying these down on a, a towel so that the glass doesn't shatter from going from extremely hot to cold. It's a good practice to get into. So we're going to start removing the jars and I try to do it from opposite sides of the basket. Look at that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit on the counter just like it is for 24 hours. And that way we can assure that the lids will fully seal and we won't run into any problems down the road. Voila! And there we go. So that pretty much sums up the canning process. Now we're going to let these sit like I said and in a few hours we're going to come back I'm just going to check the lids and make sure that they are still sealed. If they are not sealed, they'll make a clink, 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 clink sound if you push on the lids. So I'm going to let them sit for 24 hours 
and then they should be good to go. So that about wraps it up today, guys. I hope you enjoyed what you saw, and if you did, definitely like and subscribe to our channel, and we'd appreciate it if you leave a note in the comments. You know, if there's something else you want to see, or if there's any questions you had about the recipe, uh, definitely let me know, and I can help out as much as I can. Uh, I just wanted to elaborate on how fun it is for uh, us to make salsa. We really enjoy doing it. We do a batch maybe once a month, once every two months, and it's a great opportunity. We love to garden, and to take those vegetables from the garden and be able to bring them in the kitchen, you know, process them, and store them for the winter, it's great. I mean, you know, Melissa and I were talking about this, and we really love the taste of our own salsa. You know, um, when you get uh, homemade salsa and you start putting together batches, and then you end up going to somebody else's house and they have the store-bought stuff, you know, it just isn't the same. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity for you to learn. It's pretty fail-safe. It's a real easy um, project and it's a lot of fun. So if you uh, enjoy what you saw, like I said, like and subscribe and drop a note in the comments and we'll catch you later.